Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here to rant to you a little bit about NG or Spirit Hunter NG as they're calling it and just before I get started and trust me I don't really want to get started but before I get started I have to thank PlayAsia because if it wasn't thanks to them I wouldn't be able to afford NG so if you want to support me in the channel link and coupon in the description use both of them you'll save a little bit of money and you'll be helping me out in the process with that said let's get into it so for those of you who don't know ng is well honestly it's the sequel to deathmark the stories of the main characters are unconnected but basically everything else is the same it's a visual novel style game with some adventure puzzles fighting off spirits, dying if you fail, and a bunch of the mechanics make a return. Everything from that counter that counts down if you're trying to make a choice, although most of the time it still kills you instantly if you get it wrong, so it's not really worth anything. Uh, there's still fights with spirits at the end of each case, although they call them survival escapes in this one. And they've sig significantly cut down the amount of stuff you can do in them in order to make them simpler. But they still run into a couple of problems. And there's a few other things as well. But we'll get into all of them shortly. But there's just something I want to say before we go on. I do plan on talking about this game and my experiences with it. I have played through the prologue and the first two cases. Because that's about all I could take. Because... Well, again, we'll get into that in a minute. With that said, though, I also wanted to talk about this game's reviews because this game's reviews are fucking stupid. I do not understand how this game is ranking so damn highly. I am seeing 9s and 10s all over the damn place and it literally makes no sense to me. I don't know what they're doing that I'm missing. I don't know what game they're playing, but it's definitely not this one. With that said though, I would like to take the opportunity to praise NG for a few things, which is something I don't usually do. I don't specifically say I'm going to praise a game for, well, any particular reason, but that's because I still have a bunch of things that I think are wrong with this game that they've carried over from the predecessor, which is Deathmark, but I will say that some things have definitely been improved. There is definitely, like, there is definitely a step or three up from Deathmark in comparison to NG. So, I, yeah, I guess we should probably just, like, summarize it. So, it is a visual novel. You do have the wandering around the place and you have spirits to hunt down and fight. And... They've made this process a fair bit simpler. There's a couple of things they've changed that made things a fair bit easier. You, They've fixed the uh, directionals when you're moving around. So actually navigating the areas is very easy because up, down, left, right will always be up, down, left, right on your map, which is very good. It, there's no like annoying turning that kind of confuses you when you try and run away from a spirit although nothing like that happens in the first two cases still they've also majorly simplified the first two cases mazes where they're basically just straight shots it's kind of interesting actually they've added a neat little subsystem off to the side where when someone texts you in a weird way you can go around and find D cards, which will give you a little bit more history of the game and the universe without having to go play Deathmark, because thank god. So, if you get those text messages and you go searching around the area for the object that he's hitting the card in, it'll give you a little bit of a story beat, letting you know about the world of spirits, which gives the game and the universe a little bit more fleshing out. Just a little bit. Not much, but it's there. You do have the ability to turn on a scary mode. Yes, this is literally what they call it. Just, I don't know why they call it this, but there is a scary mode that you can turn on, which is supposed to uh, turn up the scares or turn down the scares in certain cases if you put them in the um, lower options. 
But however, I just will say this immediately. As far as I can tell, all scary mode does is add more jump scares. And this is one of the reasons why I think the reviews are bullshit. Because I've seen more than one review say that the game has absolutely no jump scares. This is a fucking lie. One of many fucking lies I want to get into. Because I'm... I don't know why I'm legitimately so pissed off about this. But the reviews are all lies. I don't understand it. But anyway. They got rid of the story concept where people are being interchangeably swapped in and out at the end of every case so you actually stay with the same two companions throughout well as far as i can tell anyway the entire plot so you actually get time to learn about them you get time to be with them and there's no like it, it i'm not saying it's the best thing in the world again we'll get to that i'm trying to be praising it right now but at the same time, the fact that your companions aren't being swapped out at the end of every case is actually pretty good for the pacing of the story because you know who you're working with and who you're running into and all that. It just makes the game feel slightly better overall in a storytelling when they're not having to constantly introduce you to new characters. Not to mention try and give them personality within the short time span. Because cases in this game are actually relatively short. It's got... It's got about the same amount of cases and playtime as Deathmark in it. It's got a prologue case, which is pretty long. Then you've got five cases, and then you've got the ending. And all the cases are like two to three hours long. I got through them a little bit faster, mainly because I eventually got fed up with the text speed. But again, we'll get to that. But the cases are relatively well paced. And you've got that thing going on where it warns you... like. It's that little thing in the universe where it warns the main character that they're about to die, but basically it's more or less a cue for you to say, oh, I'm close to the end of this case, I might as well get through it, right? I always appreciated that about Deathmark. I didn't realize how much I appreciated it until I got to it in NG, but there you go. And I'll give them some credit. While I'm not a fan of the monster designs that they've come up with, and by monsters I mean spirits, while I'm not a fan of the spirits that they've come up with, I do appreciate the graphical presentation of the entire world, basically, the backgrounds for the most part. They've done a really nice job at giving it this uh, dark and kind of decrepit atmosphere in basically everything. Except for the couple of places where that doesn't make sense, like the inside of a well-lit bar. But, you know, I do appreciate shots like the shopping arcade in the second one, where it's dark it's gloomy it's quiet i appreciate the um the atmosphere it's going for some people say it scared the shit out of them it didn't scare me at all but i do appreciate the atmosphere they're going for it doesn't make it feel like uh it doesn't make it feel like ridiculously gloomy but at the same time it's not ridiculously like lit up and cartoony so i'll at least give them credit for being decent at that I also like the idea of, um, blood matry. They call it something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is, but basically it's the idea that you get flashbacks to the, uh, things like the murders in general, or the murders of anyone in particular, when you touch their blood, which helps the story have a little bit more weight to it by actively showing you what's going on instead of leaving you to guess. And that said, though... I do believe that the I, I do believe that the story itself isn't particularly great and again it's another reason why I disagree with the reviews. Some people say that all these spirits made people cry and based purely on the first two spirits I do not understand this at all but yeah it's well what else can I praise before I truly get onto the parts of it that really piss me off. I don't think I have much. I, not, not much more, anyway. I will say this to, like, bridge the gap, though. The writing is better, but it's still dry. And I mean that in the negative sense. Like, it doesn't have any kind of spark to it. It doesn't have any kind of real chemistry between the characters. They're all just kind of, like, I, I brought up cartoons earlier, and that's kind of true about this. Like, they 
they kind of play like one note stereotypes more than anything else or it's more like two note stereotypes I suppose and the annoying thing is they kind of play off that these two characters have secrets for a while um, the two main sidekicks that you get they play off that they both have secrets but for whatever reason they feel the need to just reveal them to you immediately and then their characters really aren't that interesting anymore so I can't imagine why I would want to be like why I would want to dig further into these people's characters there was one character who I was kind of getting to like because there was still stuff we didn't know about him so therefore it meant that his character was a little bit more interesting and I'm pretty sure he died at the end of the second case because screw me right but yeah so yeah, the writing is not particularly grand. Uh, some people say the spirits have made them cry, as I said before, and I really don't get why that is. Like, it's terrible what happened to these spirits, but I just, I, I just don't get it. I don't get what makes these spirits so interesting to people. Like, sure, they got, that they ended up going through some really bad stuff, but the second spirit in particular is just weird. Like, it's literally a retarded girl who's twice as big as everyone else carrying around an axe. And... I just... I, I got nothing on this one. It's so strange how... It feels weird how they pull out a retarded girl and... Basically just kind of... Screw it. The two spirits that I've seen so far are basically screwed over. That seems to be the main point behind them. They both got in really bad trouble. It's... It's weird. It... How do I explain this in a way that makes sense? So... They really do have bad things happen to them. And they do show you things like the scenes in which they were murdered. Except I don't think they actually do in the second spirit now that I think about it. But... It just, it doesn't do anything for me. I don't find it to be particularly interesting. And if anything, it's kind of obvious. Like, it it was weird actually just how quick, it was weird how I managed to figure out the second girl's thing so quickly. Because the main thing about this game seems to be thinking out, uh, figuring out the plot of the spirits in the sense that you try and figure out the little secrets that the game is trying to hide. But in both cases that I played, it was so obvious, just on the surface of it, what the spirits were going through and what they needed in order to be purified. Because it brings it back that thing from Deathmark where you can either do spiritual damage to get rid of them, but you'll end up losing a partner. Or you can do... You can try and, like, solve their problem, get rid of their grudge, and just make them fade away. In one case, it was annoyingly obtuse... We'll get to that. And in the other case, it was annoyingly obvious. So I don't know if the latter spirits require you to do a bit more detective work, but for whatever reason, that's just kind of how that's just kind of how it is. It's weird. It's really weird. I just I got nothing, like in terms of intelligence story or emotional impact out of these two spirits. And then I'm reading these reviews that have people saying that they've been crying over these spirits and their stories. And I just can't help but think to myself, did we play the same game? Speaking of story, they haven't learned their lesson from Deathmark. They have an automatic speed, which is too slow, a skip speed, which is too fast, the opportun no opportunities to affect both of these, and the text is just a pisser to get through again. It's slightly better than it was last time, but considering, as I said before, how dry the writing is this time and how relatively unimpressed I am with it, it just becomes skip-worthy after an hour and a half because you start knowing exactly what they're going to say, how they're going to say it, and it's not going to have any interesting character moments or anything. There's like one or two character moments in the five to six hours that I played. It's not like a game like Muv Love where you get plenty of time to learn the characters before shit goes to hell. In this game, shit kind of goes to hell immediately and you don't get any breathing room. Like, it's kind of funny actually. It's There's this one section between the first case and the second case 
where they literally fade through like three days within like one minute if you skip through the text. But it's, it's something like 25 lines, which literally has the protagonist saying, oh, I just went and laid down for a day. Oh, I had to go and um, do something else this day. Oh, the um, I've got another spirit cursing me now. It's actually kind of funny in the long run. They literally could have used that to do some better character building, but for whatever reason, they just decide to skip a couple of days because why the fuck not? I'm legitimately not sure what made them decide to go that route, but yeah, these characters aren't particularly interesting because you learn their major gimmicks very early on, and once you do, they've got basically nothing to really keep me invested. Which is unfortunate because the game doesn't have that extra um, mystery about the spirit and who's haunting you. Be because the, um, the spirit is kind of like displayed out in the open. Although I have to warn you right now, if you actually care about playing this game through, don't read the trophy list. I am telling you now, do not read the trophy list, especially when it's got the descriptions, because man, after reading one description of a trophy and then accidentally looking at the description for the good ending, it tells, I, I'm pretty sure it spoils who the main spirit is. Yeah, go me, right? But yeah, other than, well, that mystery, of course, but I've never been particularly, like, enthralled by that kind of, like, mystery because it, you know, it's not like they give you that much information until the very end of the game anyway. But yeah, don't go reading the trophy list. And as I was saying before, the text is still a massive pain in the ass to read and I was just skipping it after, like, an hour, an hour and a half because there was just nothing doing it for me in the way of the writing and... It was faster and more effective for me to just skip like 20 lines and then read it all in the backlog. But of course, the backlog doesn't go for very long, does it? So you can only skip for a certain amount of time before the game's like, nope, screw you. Great. There's a reason why they let you adjust text speed and the auto scrolling speed and the auto to next message speed and whether or not skipping lets you skip text you've already read because if, there's a reason why they do that in every visual novel because it makes it easier to do things like go for multiple endings because guess what this game's got three endings and you still have to go down the destruction and purification route for every individual case if you want to get the platinum trophy which requires at least two playthroughs because screw you and this is another thing I want to bring up because, again, another review brought this up and I absolutely hate the fact that someone would consider this a convenient save system, but you can only save at the end of each in-game day and the end of those in-game days are, like, they are incredibly inconsistent with how far apart they are. Sometimes it'll be like a good 45 minutes to an hour of reading back. Sometimes, as I said before, you'll go through three days in the span of five minutes and you'll be thinking, why is it asking me to save so fucking much? I have no idea why they felt the need to do that, but it's a thing. And someone decided to call this a convenient save system. Have they ever played a visual novel in their life? Because every visual novel lets you save everywhere. Now, I understand why this game wouldn't let you save literally anywhere, because... If you're able to save anywhere in this game, it's very easy to back yourself into a corner you can't get out of. But, letting you save anywhere in any of these, like, events segments where you're just reading text would be fine. But, for whatever reason, they just don't let you do that. Thoroughly frustrating. I don't understand why you can't save anywhere. You can load from anywhere, but you can't save anywhere. It seems like a strange, uh compromise to me really it sh you should just also considering the fact that again you have to kind you have to rely on the previous day save in order to go for the alternate endings be prepared for a lot of skipping because when i went through and got the bad ending for the first spirit i had to go through and try and find the good ending for the first spirit which meant i had to skip through like 15 to 20 minutes of text just to just to get back to it and i was really frustrated by that really, really piss me off, if I'm being perfectly honest. I just, I, I, I don't understand it. Like, 
this is experience we're talking about. They're a Japanese developer who's literally been around for a decade and they haven't managed to play a visual novel that did this right yet. I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately uh, amazed at how more people aren't complaining about this either. I, I guess other people are just slower readers than I am. Like, I'm actually capable of reading really quickly, and considering that there isn't any voice acting that I need to worry about in this game, being able to go through the text as fast as possible while, like, not outright skipping it w is a really nice benefit for me, because it means I can get through this sort of thing faster, but they just feel the need to arbitrarily limit me, and it frustrates me. It really frustrates me, and it's, it's the main reason why I couldn't get through this, because they just can't seem to get it right. But anyway, moving on. There is voice acting, though. I did lie when I said there wasn't voice acting, but there, there's, it, the clips are so few and far between that I can't help but wonder why they bothered at all. There's, like, every hour you'll hear, like, one clip or two right next to each other, and then that's it. You'll just get silence for another 30 to 45 minutes. It's weird. I'm not going to claim to know why, but it just doesn't really help the game's atmosphere at all. Especially when all the voice actors sound kind of generic, and the clips that they pull from are a really small pull, so you start hearing the same clips over and over again very quickly. Not going to claim to know about that, as I said, but that's just how they do it. Uh, what else is there? What else is there? Oh, uh, God, I'm sorry. I've got a headache. I'm really tired, but I need to get this done. This video is due to go out very shortly, so what else is there? Just put my mind's on it. Right, another thing that doesn't seem to have much in the way of mattering to the main plot at all. Sometimes characters will ask you about things, and it will be like five options you can pick from, from really happy to really annoyed. Or at least that's what it seems to be. Because when you pick one, it changes like two lines in the dialogue and then nothing happens like you'll, you'll just go straight back on the main plot i don't know if this goes i don't know if this ends up with anything but i would appreciate like maybe just a little more variety maybe narrow it down to two choices and then have the main story branch off a little bit just to give you a little bit of extra flavor but yeah there just seems to be like one line for every individual option and then it just goes on to the rest of the main plot i don't know if this matters later on but if it does i don't know about it I don't see any reason why you wouldn't pick happy all the time, but that's just a thing. Uh, the crisis choice is back, where you have to pick a choice while the clock is counting down, but out of the first two cases in the prologue case, there is literally one that will not get you killed instantly if you don't pick the right option. Literally one. And even then, this one choice is like one instant kill, one that'll cut your time in half, and one that's the right one. Everything else is instant kill. And I legitimately don't know why they're bothering with this system. It, it just seems like a way to waste your time. And they are more than happy to waste your time on that one. They also, uh, while you're investigating a spirit... They give you a little bit of a case file, and this case file is basically just a little fact dump for what you've found out so far that gets updated at the end of every day. Under normal circumstances, this thing would be pretty useful. However, they obviously didn't test the Vita version's localization, because anytime you look at this, half the text will be going off the bloody screen. Like, you'll be reading a line, and the line will just progress off the screen, and you won't be able to read any further. It's weird. It's really weird. This happens multiple times, by the way. It's almost impossible to uh, not notice because they force you to look at the um, case file at the end of the day when it's updated. So you'll notice immediately that there's a line that's gone off the screen. This also happens during the crisis choice where all of the lines aren't vertically centered properly. So they'll be hanging off the edge and they'll actually be really hard to read. It's bizarre. I don't understand why the game is like this, but someone didn't test the localization before it went out. God damn it, Axis. There are no other options to mention, by the way. Uh, you can... I, I think you can turn off scary mode at pretty much any time that you like, but... Outside of that, there are, like, no options to configure whatsoever. 
which some people... Are, I mean, it's okay. I'm just wondering if there was anything they could have done to make this a little bit easier, like allowing you to see all the objects you can interact with right away, because this this plays into some of the major problems I had with the survival escape stuff, which is what they've turned the fighting against uh, ghosts in the spirits in the original game eventually fell to. Where you have items that you can use, locations to use them on, and that's pretty much it. You can't determine what you do with the items, you just use them somewhere and hope for the best, which means you kind of have to do brute forcing. You have to, like, throw, like... The best example I've got for this, which is why it's really frustrating to me personally, is the first two cases, final survival escapes, where you actively have to fight them off while trying to figure out how you're supposed to, like, win against them, whether it be purification or what have you. In the first case, the thing that you do when you select an object and another object is you chuck it at it at full force. You have no control over this, you just get, I threw this thing at this thing as hard as I could. And there are two, there are three reasons, there are th like, alright. First ob um, first boss, you have to throw a, a certain object at a certain thing to distract it. However, you can't throw it at the thing that's close to you because it just bounces back and the thing doesn't miss it. If you throw it directly at the thing itself, it'll be like, I'm going to eat you anyway. If you throw it at a tree off in the distance, that's when it decides to take notice of the thing you've thrown. It's really specific like that, where you have to do very specific things with very specific objects, and if you don't, it'll just kill you. And you'll have to do the fast forward through the entire thing again. And I'm legitimately not sure why they felt the need to do this, because it just started to frustrate me after a while, because I felt like I was trying to brute force the puzzle more than trying to be clever about how I distracted the thing. Especially since they had implied that multiple objects could do the job that this one specific object has to do. You have to use this one specific object at this one specific time. They do kind of help you out with this by blocking off a few specific objects, but at the same time, in the first case in particular, there are a lot of objects that just don't end up getting used. You end up assembling like 15 objects, and only three of them end up being useful in the final battle. Now, with that in mind, in the sense that you have to do things very specifically, and the first time that I was told to throw, um, to press X on something, to throw something at it, it got me killed. In the specific instance that I threw something directly at the spirit I was fighting, it got me killed. So the train of thought in my mind was to do something along the lines of, all right, I can't interact with the monsters directly because they'll just kill me for it. This point of view came back to bite me hard in the second case because you very specifically have to give something to the monster in order to actually, you know, purify it and end the fight. I am... It just shit like that, man. Shit where it punishes you for doing something that makes you do that specific something. It got me stumped. I was stumped for a good 20 minutes on this one boss fight. And again, once you pull it, um, you, you have to hit try again every time you do, and it's inconsistent just how far it'll throw you back. So, you end up getting thrown all the way back to before the encounter happens, so you just have to hold the button and wait for it to go on through. Right? And I got really, really bored of that really damn quickly. Sometimes it won't even let you, like, resume at the scene you're in, but sometimes it will. It's, it's weird. I don't know why. However, the one thing that eventually well and truly turned me off this title was the one object that you need, and really you don't need much else except for stuff that you are supposed to find throughout the plot, but when you are, when you're going for the purification route, on the first case, you need to get a very specific object that doesn't appear until you come back for the final time and then it's just there on the ground, but it's an incredibly dark piece of paper against an incredibly dark background. 
So it's also in an area where in the grand scheme of things, a random piece of paper showing up like that makes almost no sense because it's a dark and windy night and that paper would be gone. But for whatever discerning reason, they decide to make this really dark piece of paper against this really dark background only, in a, only appear in a place you've thoroughly searched, which is another problem with this game's logic, by the way, where they insist on adding shit in new places that you have come back to and only after certain event flags I was like in the second case for example I was walking up the street looking in all the objects thinking they've probably added something new because they did in the last one then I got to the very end of the street and the main characters start talking to each other and then a very obvious hint comes up on screen saying What's the word I'm looking for? A very obvious hint comes up on the screen saying, go back and search everything you just looked through. I just threw up my hands and I was like, fuck! Come on, man! I literally just looked through all that shit. You couldn't let me find it early and give me a little bit of a bonus for that? Fuck off. But no, back to the first case. So, really dark paper lying on really dark ground in a situation where it makes absolutely no sense. And it also has a really weird logical inconsistency because... You pick up this piece of paper and it says um, the name of the kid that you need in order to, you know, uh, purify the spirit. Which makes no sense because as far as I can tell, I might have skipped the text by accident. But the mother that is the spirit never actually named the kid, so how would she know? Although she, did, she does say it out loud, it's still really strange. But at the same time... Just having the object be there where it was almost impossible to see. I had to resort to a video playthrough of the game in order to actually find it. Because for the life of me, I was never able to see it. Even when I knew where it was, it was still so dark that I couldn't see it until I moved the flashlight over it. Honestly, it was just shit like that. It was shit like that that drove me mad in um, the previous game as well. At least they don't pull the bullshit on you where you can go in with the wrong companion and end up screwing yourself out of the final boss and you can't combine items anymore which makes it so um you can't combine items so it makes things a little bit simpler but I still found myself resorting to brute force more than I did anything else not to mention having to look it up for the walkthrough and man I, I can't get along with that th sort of thing. I can't get along with objects being hidden so well that I had to rely on a guide to find them. I can't get along with shit like, oh, you just looked through all that shit? Too bad. Go back and actually look now. But here's the one thing that really pissed me off. Here's the one thing that I thought, you know what? This isn't worth it. If it's going to treat me like this much of an idiot, I'm going to be really, really annoyed. So, the game gives you a lot more hints in comparison to Deathmark. It tells you a lot more, but it has this annoying tendency to give you a lot of tutorials in obvious standalone boxes, which aren't like any characters in particular talking to you. Like, as far as I can tell, you don't... As far as I can tell, you don't get the information on purifying or destroying spirits from any particular character, the game just kind of feels the need to drop this information on you because, well, it can't seem to let you figure that one out for yourself. Which, to be fair, if it wasn't for that, like, really well-hidden piece of paper on the ground in the first spirit case, they might have actually been able to let you figure that one out for yourself. However, in the second case, it starts off with this weird, like, film-like title that says, like, Death Game, Companion Name 1, slash Companion Name 2. That's what starts off the second case. So you think to yourself, oh, something weird is going to happen here. I can't imagine what. Then at the end of the case, it forces you to make a choice between your two characters. But the hint that comes up is, and I quote, uh, I'm, I'm, actually, I can't really quote it because I don't remember the exact wording. But here's the thing. The hint that comes up says, be very careful with your next choice. You won't be able to take this character into investigations again. Choose wisely. Now, I can't help but wonder why they would feel the need to give you this hint. Because 
This is a game about death. This is a game about people getting the absolute bejesus kicked out of them. This is a game about terrible murders. This is a game about spirits that spawn mouths on your face that will eventually eat you and kill you. Why do you feel the need to tell me that I might actually be making an important choice and the exact consequences? Because they don't say in that message that the supporting character is going to die specifically. They don't say the character is going to die specifically. They say that they're just not going to be able for investigations. So not only are they spoiling what's going to happen to both characters, but they feel the need to tell me this up front in a game where multiple people, animals, and general terrible things have either died or had horrible things happen to them. Are you really going to treat me like this much of an idiot? Not to mention, it's also doing the death mark thing again, where it's removing a little bit of the ability to take people with you, therefore removing a little bit of like the uh, character variation and just general like... Having the ability to take along both characters and having them do different things is and having different takes on each situation is a really clever idea, so taking that away also kind of annoys me. But yeah, the game kind of treated me like an idiot. Like an absolute idiot. Why not put that stuff in the manual? You could, you could put that stuff in the manual and I'd be fine with it. But having it be so open and obvious in the middle of the plot from some kind of like disembodied voice from beyond makes me feel really dumb for having played it. Because if you're going to treat me like this much of an idiot, I'm going to feel like an idiot for not being able to figure this stuff out. It, I know it's a minor nitpick, but it's a, it's a minor nitpick alongside a lot of other minor nitpicks. And I wouldn't be that far against it if it just wasn't piled on top of everything else. Here's another minor nitpick for you, though. When you're going into things like survival escapes, where the spirits are actively attacking you, and the music changes... All the music was able to remind me of was cheapo flash horror games that would put in that cheesy horror music. Excuse me. All I was reminded of were those cheesy flash horror games that put in that cheesy horror music. That was all I could be reminded of every single time whenever this game's soundtrack started up in the middle of a survival escape and it made me laugh every single time. It doesn't feel any different to those terrible Flash horror games from the early 2000s. And I really wish they did better on that because it made it, it made me almost incapable of taking the spirit seriously when all I could think of was terribly written, terribly uh, pictured, horribly artifacted horror games from the early 2000s. Is that all I've got to say? about the main game. I'm pretty sure it is. I don't think I've got anything else. I just... I, I find it frustrating in a lot of ways because... As I've said before, it is absolutely an improvement over Deathmark. And if you had to pick one of the two, yeah, NG, all the way. It's definitely doing it a lot better. But again, there's a few things they didn't fix, like the text speed and some of the puzzles being obtuse and frustrating. But, at the same time, they've given it a little bit more character, they've written it a little bit better, they've made things a little bit more streamlined, so that they don't become anywhere near as frustrating to deal with, but it still somehow manages to be really frustrating to me. And that's the worst thing of all. And then I go and read all the reviews, and I think to myself, what the fuck game was I playing? Because every single review for this game gives it like a 9 or a 10 out of 10. And I just, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, uh, superb story. No, not really. Convenient save mechanics, not a chance. Hauntingly beautiful visuals, not really. There's a couple of like really uh, intense CGs in there. I'll give them that. But just overall, no, not really. And a ton of people, like, 
I've got one review here that says few to no erotic CGs, and then there's another review that says uh, full of uh, violence against women, particularly sexualized violence, and it's like, why? What? How? What? Am I missing something? Did these two people play Al? Did these two people play completely different games? That's the only reason I can think of for the... Like... It's just so strange reading all these reviews and thinking... What the fuck? What game did I play? What game did these people play? And can I play that game instead? Because... These people make the game sound a lot better than it actually is. Because as far as I'm concerned... The writing is dry, the overall puzzle design can still be incredibly frustrating, and the in, the overall story, while at least it's not like absolutely terrible, I find nothing special about it whatsoever. The art is pretty neat, except when the spirits come around and they're just kind of blobs, which is annoying because again, you would hope that they would be the most interesting kind of design. And I just, I, I, I'm not into it. I can't, I can't for the life of me get into it. And I really did give this a go because I read those reviews. I had a look at those reviews and I thought to myself, wow, they really made a big step up over the original death mark. Hopefully they'll do better this time. And they did. And they also didn't. And to be fair, a lot of the ways they didn't were really more important than the ways they did. Just to give you an idea, they've decided that they're actually going to fund the third Spirit Hunter game through crowdfunding. If they don't have the... If they don't have the, um... Motivation to put their own money into the third Spirit Hunter game... Then I can't help but wonder... Just how much that these games were liked in, like, Japan or something. I don't know, am I wrong? Am I just, like, missing something about the writing, or the spirits, or the overall gameplay? I, I just, I can't help but think, if this many people are giving this game 9s and 10s, I can't help but doubt myself a little bit, because there's clearly a lot of problems here. But, for whatever reason, they all just seem to either be ignored, or in the case of, like, those two reviews I mentioned earlier, Playing completely different games. I don't know. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments because I am legitimately curious as to what people think about this one, especially over Deathmark. Alright, I guess I get to go and cut this audio clip up now. So look... Thanks for sitting around and listening to me rant about a random horror game for 45 minutes. I... God, I have even more work to do. I have to go edit the top 10 to 1 video now. And it's going to be a 45 minute nightmare. Oh, I'm going... God, this is already a 45 minute nightmare. Look at it. Jesus. Alright, I'm out. This has been Blue Maxima and I will see you all next time.